Good evening, everyone. T Speaker 222 XRP Future Millionaire with the side button X on Future Digibyte OG. Okay, guys, so going over the charts, this consolidation continues. You know, it's just continuing. Some people are starting to say, the more I look around, they're saying, oh, XRP could be looking like this, you know, and then come back down, do the shoulder, and then come back down. You know, that's what I've been saying, but who knows if it actually happens. I don't know. So I keep saying I'm not a financial advisor. Should you take my advice? No, you should not. No motherfucking way you should. But if you're looking at my advice or my charts and you're like, you know what? Kind of does look like a head and shoulders there. Kind of does look like this kind of a pattern or it does look like it could go up or it does look like it could go down. Well, then make an educated decision because that's all it is, is an educated decision. Because at the end of the day, volume could come in one way or the other and it could completely destroy the chart. I still have my eye on Digibyte. I still feel like it's going to make that push up. It's consolidating. It came down. It kind of It's trying to touch this bottom. But something tells me, much like how Zill did. Zill started coming down a little bit. But something tells me it's going to have to do something like Zill did. It, it did essentially the same exact pattern if you break it down. You know, you just got to take it from a different point. Because it hasn't, it's not as far along in its pattern, but if you look at it, you know, and then we go back to Zill, you know, it's it's much more along the way with Zill. Right now, I would say Digi's somewhere in this area. You know, it's coming back down to about here. That's where Digi's at. Digi's about in that area right now. Went back up. Now it's coming back down to touch its meat. And then it probably, I'm thinking it's going to bounce up here somewhere. I'm thinking around 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, somewhere in there when these markets come on. A lot of those uh, markets across the world, they love fucking Digibyte. So when they see it at 15 cents, when they were just seeing it at 16, 17, I'm thinking we could get a volume spike. It's been consolidating in this area. It's tightening up its range. So we'll see what happens. XLM, same deal. I told you this is the FOMO spot. So we'll see what happens, guys, because if you're looking at it from a charting perspective, sure. There's no denying now that this is looks like this. You know, you're coming up. You could have this, and you could have this, you know. And that means it can still come back up, you know, and then you got another shoulder, and then you come down, you know, kind of like what we were seeing with XRP, and then you go from there. But will it actually happen? I don't know. Look at fucking Ethereum. Ethereum looks like now it built its massive head and shoulders, but instead of going back down to the 25, 2400 range, it built a nice little cushion, and it's going to only retrace around 3,000. So, I mean, that's why I say it. you got to be very, very careful when you're building a pattern. Nobody knows when this was going to stop. This thing just fucking, they got some great news, and look what happened. So, I said out of Bitcoin or Ethereum from the start of this show, if I was invested in one of them, I kept telling you guys I would be in Ethereum. Much more upside with Ethereum. It take Bitcoin to go to 114,000 for you to double up. Only took Ethereum from at the time it was less than 2,000. You know, and now where I look stupid because I should have put some money into it. I should have bought at least three or four Ethereum. But no. But now, you know, it's fucking blown off the top, dude. And it could keep going. What's the other one you guys were telling me? Doge. Whoa. Oh, that's not the right one, but it's definitely gone up. Yeah, 44 cents now. My dad kept asking me, and I told him, buy it up and down. He's doing it the right way, though. He bought it. He got in at a higher position. Then he bought it when it went down. Then he bought it in the middle. Now he's bought it up higher. So now he can go on a ride with those. He did exactly what I should have did, exactly what I did with XRP. You know, now he's getting into a position where he's already up, getting got to be getting close to seven, 800 bucks now. That's what I mean. He put himself in a spot and said, if it goes down, I'm buying more. If it goes up, I'm buying more. And that's exactly what he did. It went down, he bought more to bring his average down, and then it went up, and he bought it along the way. So that's why the long game, nine times out of ten, is going to make you more profit than the short game. Sure, if you caught Ethereum today and cashed out for 16 or 18%, you made 16 in one day. But what about the people that have been riding Ethereum for a few weeks that just made, you know, 90%, 85%? Hell, if you would have been riding it for five days and rode that dip for a little bit, you know, it just paid off 50% in a matter of like three days. 
I've got my Digibyte gamble. I threw my money in Digibyte once it came down to the bottom of this pattern again. I said, fuck it. It's at like 15 cents when I bought it. It's one of my long plays anyhow. So if it doesn't make this bounce up to 17, so be it. But I'm, you know, I'm willing to gamble with it just because I'm going to keep the long term anyhow. So even if I don't decide to sell it when it goes down, I'll just average down. It's not a big deal to me. This is one of my long term projects that I've been on for a long time. So I've got about 26,000 of them at one five. Where was it at? It was back here in the pattern, though, before I came on earlier. I just didn't want to say I had it in case it didn't do anything or in case it went way down, which I haven't made anything on it. I'm just saying it wasn't back there. It was and right when I bought it earlier in the day, it went up, you know, and then I should have cashed out. I guess I could have, but I, I'm trying to ride it. I'm thinking it's got to come up here somewhere, but, you know, I could be wrong. Oh, no, I didn't buy it. That, that was the other time I bought it when it dipped down. And then I cashed out right away. Yeah, I was right around 15 when I bought it. So we'll see what happens. I'm a gambling man, so, you know, it's in that range where I feel like it's consolidated a little bit. And I don't think it's ready to go back down here yet. I think it's got to do a similar pattern to Zill. So I can only tell you guys my thinking. And I always tell you, I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm thinking it's got to do something similar to Zill. Zill started correcting a little bit. Came most of the way back down, you know, and then it came up, started coming back down, and then it had that nice little push up, you know, from right here. Now you look at, it's the same thing. I'm looking at Digibyte, and it's, it's, it's kind of the same thing. It just needs that second push up. If it just does this, it'll look exact, you know, that'll look exactly like Zill, almost to the T. You know, Zill's just got more trading, so... You know, that's exactly what it would look like. It's the exact pattern. It's almost exactly. You just haven't got that last part and then Zill started coming like this. You know, I think we're looking at the same pattern here with DGB. Plus, even if it went all to hell, I love DGB. So this is a long-term hold project for me anyhow. So this doesn't mean anything. Even if it goes down, I would just buy more. You know, but on the off chance that these things are going to start railing a little bit like DGB because it is more stable. It didn't go, like I keep telling you guys, it didn't go to 18 cents for no reason. It just had its 30% pullback. And DGB is more stable, so it's not just going to have somebody buy in at the top and then cost them 95% of their portfolio in three days. They don't run like that. They've come out and said as much. So XLM again. XLM is one of my big projects. But we got to see what happens here. You know, this is a long withstanding project. And it's funny, I've had a few guys email me and say, man, XRP is kind of looking like that head and shoulders. How could you have known that a few days ago? Now it looks clear. I don't know. When I'm looking at a pattern, I can kind of see the way it's playing out. But I've been saying, be careful with Ethereum because I told my cousin, and I told you guys this when it was at 2700 not to sell it and put it into XRP because XRP was at a stagnant point until his case is resolved. It just is what it is. And he ended up keeping his four uh, Ethereum and look what happened if you were to put in all an xrp he'd be, he was going to do it at a dollar 65 because he's about to fomo and i'm like listen man don't do that don't do that as much as i love xrp i'm not going to tell you to take it out of ethereum when that thing's on its rocket ship to 5,000 right now i seen the news right before it started breaking out and it had gone from 2,000 to 2,700 in like a week and then we got the news the next day. Right when he was going to sell it the night before, the next day it came out with all that news. And then it, you see it pumped $700 in a day and a half. I mean, Doge is going to do one of two things. Doge is either building that big head and shoulders and it's coming back down to here. <clears throat> you know, or come back down to here to gather up a base. I think what's going to happen with Doge, like I called it down to 18 cents. I wish I would have listened to my own advice. When it went down to 18, when it made the dip, we, we wrote it, we found it. We knew where it was going to go, and some of you guys bought it. I don't know why I didn't buy it. You guys keep asking me. I don't know. I was too involved in the shit that I'm doing on here. And then it kind of, I don't know. Sometimes shit slips my mind. But I can tell you this. If Doge does take this, like right now, you could say the same thing as some of the other ones. Doge could possibly then come up, and then this could be a head, then a shoulder, 
and then back down. And then if it comes here, I don't, I'm not necessarily sure it's going to come all the way there. But there's a chance it could retest that 30 cent line. I told my dad, you want it to come down now because he wants to ride it to a dollar or more. He wants it to come down because he's got a deeper pocketbook. So he wants it to come down. He wants it to do one of these. And he, the greatest thing that could happen to him is if it went back down to like 20 cents and bounced up and then he could throw a couple grand at it. Or a thousand bucks at it and just get, you know, that many more shares. Because he'll, he'll fucking, he's going to make out if he does that. If it does that. If it does that, I'll be on the rocket ship with him. If, if, if we had something like that at some point, because that's probably what's going to happen with Doge. I, I have a hard time believing that they're not going to dump before May 8th. But who knows, man, when Elon Musk is behind it, you know. People keep saying, you know, how it's a shit coin. And I joke that it's a shit coin, but I keep telling you guys, it's got real world value. It turns it into a currency. It's got currency value, you know. And a lot of people that throw shade at it just can't acknowledge that, hey, it's done more than we could have ever imagined. But, you know, take XRP in that same, you know, once XRP and all this shit's behind it, it's all set up. You know, it's got to play through the motions. Once you see XRP dip, I guarantee it. Once you see XRP bottom out, if it does finish out this pattern and it comes down here again, then you'll start hearing some of the rumblings. And then you're going to see one of the biggest bounces you have ever... It's going to be like Doge, how Doge bounced off 18 cents. The next time XRP has to go down and it bounces off of it, it's going to be like, this, it's going to be like a slingshot that's pulled back at maximum resistance. And then when you let go, the motherfucker goes just flying at 1,000 miles an hour because it's got such a base down there. Like, I'm telling you, XRP could literally do one of those. You know, or it could do one of these. Or it could do one of these. That's the risk. But we're saying in a scenario where it follows the pattern. You know, it's going to be something special. Just like XLM, I just don't know which one it's going to be that goes to the higher spot. I love XRP, but in the back of my head, there's something about Stellar Lumens, man. When you say business to business, I think of XRP. But when you think of person to person, like me and you, we're on PayPal, we're on, you know, you're on YouTube on the send me shit. We're not business to business, but we're person to person. So imagine XLM is taking that business to business transfer. That's the transaction, the person to person, like the individual to individual. That, to me, that means a lot. Make no mistake about it. That means something, you know, it really does. So there's a big market for businesses, but I think the overlooked factor is nobody's paying attention to that. XLM's doing the same thing when it comes to person to person. And it's a third of the price. You know, and by the end of May, these prices aren't going to be here. They're just not going to be here. But generally, before you have a huge bounce like that, you have a little bit of a retrace. And there's nothing wrong with that. And you can see Bitcoin... Is doing it its own way. Kind of followed exactly what we wrote though. Um, but Bitcoin's kind of doing its own thing now. It's kind of just sitting around here. You know, it dropped down $1,300 on a blink of an eye. XRP's doing the exact same thing. So this could technically be the head. There's your hair. <laughs> you know, I mean, <coughs> it technically could be. I'm seeing it more and more defined every day in the 45. In the one minute, you know, when it gets back to some action, I'll get back into the one minute. But the one minute's telling you really all you need to know. Got a lot of W's in the pattern. Some inversion, though. But the volume, again, the only significant volume on there is red, except for a couple green stretches. You know, it's the same story with XLM. But XLM came off a huge inversion. But now, you know, you could say off of that inversion. Right? You know, and that would bring you back down with XLM. You know, that's where you would have to come back down to minimum. But that's in the one minute. You know, if you take it out to the 45 minute, you know, you're building the rest of this formation. And then it would be, does it want to come back down to there? I don't know. I think we built it up so high that 48 cents might be a good buy. That's where I would start buying again. But this isn't a buy zone. This is FOMO zone. Even if it goes up, you still didn't make a bad decision not buying here. When, until you break 166 with XRP, you wouldn't want to buy in this zone. Or until you go down to that 144 area. Then you can start nibbling again because that's a support zone. 
this is no man's fucking land. Sure, you could buy it and make a few percent, but the chances are if it doesn't break past there and we're sitting in no man's fucking land with no... Unless some kind of news comes out like with Ethereum. Ethereum's doing its own thing because news came out a couple days ago. It's big news. Which means it's probably going to go to 5,000 before we know it. So, got some things to look at. Pay attention to me. If you want to send a donation, don't be shy. This is the first day that I have done this and asked for donations or asked you if you want to do a donation-based show that I have not received a single donation. I'm kind of curious to see if we'll go to 12 o'clock without one donation. But if you want to donate, link's in the description. You know, tomorrow morning I'm going to do my best to get a video out, but I have to bring my son to his doctor's appointment at 8 a.m. It's his uh, checkup from when he broke his femur last year in the car accident. So... I got to go over there to do his doctor's appointment at 8. That's what, I got him the first appointment so that he doesn't have to deal with any of the nonsense. So hopefully he'll get in there, get out of there within a half hour, and then I can get a video out. Um, I might put one out before I leave. So, you know, be aware of all the work I put in. And, you know, if I've helped you out or anything, send a donation. Don't be shy. Even a dollar or two doesn't, you know, that's, that's perfectly fine. But if you're in the class, tomorrow it starts at 8 p.m., I've only had a few people sign up through the Twitch right now that have paid for the class. So if you want to, you know, I've sent you all your information. Make sure you sign up for that so that you can see when I go live. It's on follower only, so you have to pay for that so that you can watch the stream. So some people still signed up today, and that's fine. If you end up wanting to sign up, send me an email. There's still 11 spots left. So, <clears throat> you know, if you want to sign up, here, I'll put it out there one more fucking time. It's at strutrugali at gmail.com. Strutrugali at gmail.com. Oh, that's my channel analytics. Hey, we have 1,158 subscribers. So, if I can have one more subscriber at 1,159 when I come on later, I'll be really happy. We've had 61,800 views. Very nice. 4,700 watch hours. My video that I put out, oh, well, it's only a two-minute video. So you guys couldn't even watch it, the whole two minutes. But anyhow, if you want to be, just send me an email. There's 11 spots left. We have 39 students right now. It's going to be a really nice class. If you guys are part of it and you smoke, roll a joint before it, expand your mind, and just get ready to have some fun. It's not going to be like your traditional class, but I'm going to teach you a hell of a lot of information. So, again, guys, I'm T-Speaker222, XRP, Future Millionaire, with the sideband on XLM and Future Digibyte OG. Until next time, watch these levels very carefully, pay attention, and see if we are in fact forming the head. Because it, it would there's nothing worse than buying in a zone right before it comes back down to the, you know, upper support at 144 and then likely would come back down way below the normal support. So we'll see what happens, guys. Just pay attention. Don't do anything stupid. Until next time, stay blessed.